you know, it would be hard to refer to, you know, the Ottomans are coming back or uh, we are rebuilding the Ottoman Empire, at least in our discussions, internal or public discussions. But, you know, Newsweek Time, you know, you, you've been following the news, uh, you know, they keep referring to it uh, as if, you know, they want us to play that role. You know, you are the young Turks, you know, we, we don't look at ourselves that way. But uh, if you want to use Ottoman history as a positive point of reference, that is fine. Um, but even there, you have uh, this uh, um, incoherent and conflictual situation where some uh, analysts claim that because of the Arab Spring, Turkey's influence in the region will be diminished. Turkish foreign policy will be challenged in its essentials. On the other hand, you have the rise of the Ottoman world at the same time. I mean, how, how do the two happen at the same time? I mean, one of them must be wrong. Uh, but uh, uh, the regional, I think, uh, order uh, will be shaped uh, along the ways that I tried to describe at the beginning of my presentation. That is democratization, economic development, and active foreign policy. These three main elements uh, will be picked up. Uh, by uh, the new actors, new political actors in the Arab world. Uh, and uh, this will have huge implications uh, for regional politics. Uh, it, will, it will have uh, far-reaching consequences for the Middle East peace process as well. And let me end uh, with this, uh, because this is so significant. Uh, you know, most of the analysts who follow the developments there closely are aware of this, but I want to emphasize this really, uh, uh, that Regardless of what happens in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Syria, and other places, I'm sure you're eager to ask questions about Syria, what Turkey's position is, etc. I can answer some of those questions. But regardless of what happens in those countries, uh, the Palestinian issue remains the core issue in the Middle East for Egyptians, for Saudis, for Jordanians, for Lebanese, for everyone. And uh, until and unless we find a sustainable, peaceful solution to the Palestinian issue, uh, the Arab Spring uh, may uh, uh, produce results that uh, will be uh, completely unexpected, completely counterproductive. Uh, we have to see them as an integral issue there. Uh, therefore, uh, you know, what will happen in the next few months? The vote at the UN uh, for uh, Palestinian statehood, the peace process, which is not moving anywhere uh, at the moment, all these issues will, be, will become decisive issues again uh, in the next few months. Uh, and uh, Turkey will uh, remain committed to supporting the process of uh, uh, finding a sustainable solution to the Palestinian issue. But at the same time, you know, we will continue our foreign policy objectives after the elections. Uh, and uh, hopefully we will continue our policy of what I call mutual empowerment in the region. That is trying to create win-win situations for ourselves, but also for our neighbors. Uh, without giving up uh, on our EU membership goal and without lessening the significance of uh, transatlantic alliance between Turkey and the United States in any way. Thank you. Uh, hello there. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, Adam Nixon with Al Gore TV. Uh, my question regards uh, the U.S. and Turkish relationship. Uh, primarily, in the United States, there seems to be a political will among the voters to withdraw. Withdraw from Iraq, to a certain extent, withdraw from mm -hmm. Afghanistan, and even to change the U.S. relationship with NATO vis-a-vis -vis funding, maybe uh, change the, the amount that the U.S. Uh, supports NATO activities from 70% to 60 to 40, whatever the number ends up being. Uh, my question is regarding Turkey. Does Turkey have the political interest in filling that void? Would the Turkish public like to be more part of the Iraq solution, more part of uh, Afghanistan, and also play a larger role in NATO, uh, especially regarding the, the question about EU membership? Uh, thank you. Well, we are part of uh, the process in all of the uh, you know, countries and issues that you just mentioned, Iraq, uh, Lebanon, peace process, Syria, uh, and other places, NATO. Uh, I, I think it will continue. Of course, it's up to uh, Americans to decide whether or how much they will remain committed or influential, you know, uh, in, in global affairs. So I, 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 in my personal opinion, I don't think uh, the U.S. can even afford to shrink its 
presence and influence, uh, you know, in global affairs. I, I mean, there, there's always this talk, obviously, about you know we should downsize and that you should downsize and you know uh, limit uh, U.S. influence in the world, etc. Uh, but uh, at a time when everything is becoming so intertwined, so interdependent uh, in this world of globalization, um, I don't think uh, any country that wants to be uh, influential, that wants to maintain its status, its power in the world, can. Uh, claim that you know we are just going to withdraw from all these uh, troubled areas. Uh, of course, the way we engage these problems should change. That's a different thing. You know, you can maintain your sphere of influence uh, and presence, but the way we engage and treat these issues uh, that can change, and it should change. Obviously, uh, you know, uh, trying to solve issues in Iraq or in other places through the prism of a security-based perspective. Uh, has not produced any good results. Uh, we need to change that, obviously. Uh, Turkey will, will continue uh, you know, to play a role uh, in all of these areas because we are part of that geography. Uh, we cannot run away from that geography, as I just mentioned. Uh, and we are trying to uh, you know, turn it into a strategic asset for ourselves as being located you know, in this strategic uh, position. Therefore, uh, it's not a matter of uh, you know, filling someone else's vacuum, but really uh, trying to create a regional order in which these issues can be addressed uh, through peaceful means rather than through, uh, through war. Uh, thank you, uh, Sergei Neubauer, and uh, I'm from SOS International. And I, uh, I want to ask a little bit about, uh, you mentioned uh, legitimacy and dignity and the role that has played in the Arab Spring. Um, so my question is, uh, Turkey seems to have taken two different approaches when it comes to Bahrain on the one hand, where um, Turkey has been very critical of um, the ruling family and uh, some of the uh, national dialogue or, or lack of a national dialogue taking place. And on the other hand, um, Turkey seems to have been very silent on uh, what is happening in Iran and the domestic situation there in uh, 09, uh, a little short, no, 10, whenever it was, um, before the Arab Spring erupted. It seems that um, uh, Turkey, uh, as someone who has invested a lot and significantly in Iran, uh, failed um, to, to raise those issues. So I was wondering, where does um, Turkey uh, looking at the situation in the region, uh, where does Turkey see um, Iran developing on that issue, and how um, and how do you see Erdogan um, um, tackling that issue? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> when uh, events uh, in Bahrain started, uh, you know, we made it clear to all sides, to the ruling family, Crown Prince, who was actually in Ankara just a few weeks before uh, the events started there, and to the opposition groups that. Uh, the situation uh, in Bahrain should never be construed as one of sectarian conflict. It should be between reform uh, and those who oppose reform. We should never turn this into a sectarian issue, that is Sunni Shiite issue. Because that's a very explosive uh, thing to do. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, this is a big issue in the region, from Iraq to Lebanon, you know, from Bahrain to other places. That is how the Middle East or the Muslim world in general will address the issue of sectarian divide, sectarian relations, Sunni Shiite relations in particular, uh, I think will be a key issue and concern to everyone. And I admit we have to do more. I mean, you know, countries in the region, uh, religious leaders, political figures, uh, communities, they have to do more uh, to bring about a historical reconciliation between Sunnis and Shiites. 